Hello everyone, welcome to this channel. I am Lily and this video is the short playthrough about how to migrate with 400 plus population on Hardcore Slow without losing any members. I will play a few years only and show you how I achieve success with large Hardcore tribes. There will not be a lot of explanations on mechanics as I expect all Hardcore players to know them as well as I do. But I will give you a few hints and tips and do's and don'ts. It is no longer an easy feat to stay long term with a 400 population on Hardcore after the food was cut down even more. So let's see how we will fare with 400 people semi long term. So we all know the drill about how to prepare a tribe for migration. No people dying while we're traveling or the first few days after we've landed. Travel only at night. Aim far so that people sleep at night without getting any lack of housing unrest. And as soon as the sun comes up, we plan short trips. The, uh, um, the amount of food will decide how much you need to gather when you land compared to how much time you have to to uh, build. So if you get a lot of food, like do scavenge runs, then you get a lot of food and then you do migrate when you have a ton of food. So the, the unrest you can rely on having without um, losing any members for sure is the lack of housing unrest because that will go away the first night when you are migrating. As usual, find a place to plonk down, plonk down your camp. Roughly in the middle of the big U is normally where I go. Just need to see where are the hazelnut trees. There are no hazelnut trees on this side of the river. Anyway, as usual, we are going to start with graves because we only have like perhaps three days, two, three days before the next old one dies. When you have 400 people, you need at least eight to 12 within a few days. So don't skimp on the time for these. You have to get them down. That is a big do. Graves, always, always. And by the graves, you also chalk down. Oh, I can't place this down without highlighting the other one. Need the angle. So always remember to place down offerings. Very important to, to avoid a lot of unrest because it can take away up to 13 unrest-ish, depending how long they pray. And that can really do do the trick to keep people. Because uh, on day four, almost everyone will have lack of housing um, options, unrest, and uh, a very high percentage of those will have uh, the the fireplace unrest, which is plus thirty four or minus thirty four, uh, or plus no, it's plus thirty four. Duh, plus thirty four unrest, and those who have the odds of pelt up will have a minus 26 or plus 26. It's difficult to, to try to remember always that unrest is plus and unhappiness is minus because it's minus from the, the unrest. So it's it's a bit odd system, takes a bit to get used to. I still am not used to it. I'm still saying it the wrong way. Anyway, remember the fireplace, it must be big ones and you need to cover for 400 people. So calculate that roughly eight to 10 people can fit around a large fireplace. So you should place down, to be sure, place down 40 if you can. I can't quite remember the limit. I think it's quite high. So get that done. And now we have tons of food. Some of it will be um, decayed away, but this is why I have put down the group's um, tasks to, to not um, over harvest so much food that the current locality food will decay away. We don't want that. Okay, so let's get our builders busy immediately. Just chalk down several of these because we have tons of straw because that straw comes with you now that you have livestock because you need to feed your livestock during winter if you migrate at winter. Right, let's uh, get done with preparation for farming as well. So if you play it on slow like I do now, slow speed, then you can continue to build while your people are clearing and starting gathering. 
but make sure that you're gathering enough sticks and not giving the stick uh, gatherers more tasks and also gather a lot of stones raw stones because they are super needed so uh, put the group that does raw stones up to 28 with maximum priority because the, the thing that will make or break the quick how quickly you're getting items is the amount of raw stones you get into camp because we have a lot of things needing raw stones and chuck up the work age the work hours and uh, make sure that uh, you are utilizing day one to the absolute max absolute max and we are so close to um, new season for tilling and clearing tilling and planting that we need to get things down we need to just get started with all the farms as well no time to muck about it doesn't matter if you don't um, complete them all what is important is that you've made a start so that next year you have several farms available to be harvested because we are relying on wild food for at least two years before we can rely any heavily on any um, farm or cultivated foods. Okay, that was not... Okay, I just realized there was a ton of uh, rose hips there. Or dog rose bushes, which they are actually called. It's the fruit that is called rose hip. Or we just call them rose hip bushes. Because we call them by what the fruit is called, so that's fine. Right, so let's make two of everything. Oh, that's just a normal tree. So uh, step number one as well with regards to the attention you need to pay is on your people's unrest. And remember also that even though they just have 34 in unrest for lack of, of decent housing, it only takes uh, max three, maybe four years before their will will decide if they've had enough of waiting for better housing. So you don't necessarily see that uh, it goes up to like 80 unrest. It's just they suddenly get enough because they have high will or you have waited so long with giving them proper housing that they just don't care anymore and they just leave you. So, so it's a bit of a, a tricky, it's a bit tricky to, to get it right. Okay, no bees, no beehive. Just get them down, just get them down. Whether they are being completed this year or not is not that important. Just get them down. So they have started on it. Right. Um, yeah. So I have also given the fireplaces to a fireplace a building group. That means they will only focus on the fireplaces. And you will get up several per day, which is fine. Which is what you need. Um, you see the graves need to come up as well. So I'm trying to not lose a single member to any unrest or anything stupid that I do. I'm trying to keep everyone. So let's see how that goes. It should not be an issue because I have uh, done it a lot of times for a long time without losing anyone. But after the, the food was reduced drastically in hardcore again, um, I have not tested out a 400 population tribe long term or semi long term which this is going to be so I'm going to play it roughly two years because within two years I would like to have at least eight farms established if you have eight farms established with 400 people you can rely 50 50 50 percent on cultivated and 50 percent on wild produce and after four to five years the wild produce will be so low that you should again uh, do your uh, migration and do a scavenge run and then uh, migrate again and then place down farms again so scavenge run is roughly like maybe half a year or so maybe one year you only live off the wild produce but make sure that you are having enough to cover for between five and seven at least seven days um, in the locality you wish to stay a few years I will not uh, harvest any roots because they are miners. I will also make uh, a storage area for bones and lock it down because I don't want to eat that either. So yeah, let me see. Just keep an eye on everything. Just let them build in peace. Get that done as well. We also want the uh, tools. 
that the farmers will use close to where they need to use them. Or lo like if you're going close to where the food is, then they won't go back and forth. They will go directly from one to the next without wasting any time on logistics. So this is a min maxing, but you know, for hardcore, it could be needed. Beginners and expert, you can get away with having them everywhere and not really in any specific area close to the farms, but you, you will suffer if you do it on hardcore. Every little helps on hardcore, to be honest. Right. So let's put it on there and the work hours, of course, down again, because I do not want to wake, to wake them up with hard work hours, because that will create even more unrest. So normally you have between two to four days before they have really unhappy faces, before they get yellow faces. It's a kind of um, safe time for your tribe after you have migrated. I asked for this quite a few years ago. I think it was before even um, agriculture came and, and of course livestock because it was difficult to migrate with a big hardcore tribe because they got like 550 unrest uh, just day one. It was too, too difficult even for those of us who, who knows the, the mechanics of the game and how to use the, um, the policy, the tribe policies. Okay, so the bakers have work they need to do as well because we are going to, of course, make bread out of the the wheat grains above people eating them as is. Because the calorie count in the wheat has been more than doubled. So if you have one um, sack of flour, which is a little bit less than one wheat grain, which is roughly four wheat sheaves, you will get 10 breads time over two times double the usual calorie count. So this is an extremely economical way to keep your tribe healthy and happy because they also love bread. Bread is food that will make them have uh, happiness in their uh, in their unhappiness, I almost said. If you see they have a yellow face, you can see the green numbers with minus, um, I like the food. And this is what bread will help you with. And of course, offerings also to pray. So get up the offerings, get up the comfort as you are building everything else. With 400 people, you can afford to do it the way I do. You can do it slower if you like to, but that means there will be more material to camp, but less people that will actually do the building. So you can also use builder groups to make sure that the, the groups are, or that the objects that belong to these builder groups are actually being done. It is more than one way to do it. I will just show you how I do it. Because this is how I have succeeded the best without losing anyone. So uh, this is day two. We have roughly one to two days before people start showing unhappy faces. So we need to get up um, more and more fireplaces. Yeah, we already have several ready, which is good. So this means less and less people will have issues with sleeping um, by the fireplace or without having a proper quality housing. Then they can go longer and longer for every uh, upgrade you give them. So now we have upgraded from open sleeping, open area sleeping, to sleeping by the fireplace. And then we have another two to four days before they necessarily uh, become more, have more unrest. And by day eight, we need to have at least a few housing up so that people can start rotating. And then the uh, unrest will go even more down or it will not escalate is more correct to say because um, if you don't have a plus house in quality, such as what we have option for now, which is the big reed hut, then you will have a slow incremental increase in unrest. Because nobody will want to sleep for years by the fireplace or in the pelt hut for that matter. The pelt hut will also give quite high unrest. So it's a good idea to have plenty varying um, housing with both material and size and whatever to make sure that they rotate well on each and everything. So if one dude sleeps in a pelt hut one day and develops extra unrest, he can then be rotated to go sleep in the reed hut, which will give plus eight quality, which will make him happier. So this is a nice um, a rotating system that the, the, the tribe will do by themselves. But yeah, uh, but Insta bad, bad, bad is lack of graves. 
I have had incidences where I have forgotten to build enough graves or forgotten them as I am playing, but I have been really lucky and those persons that have died have either had no relatives or they've had only relatives with really good grades, so they took a lot of, of, of grief before they wanted to leave and I managed to get up graves before that happened. So you do have that it starts fairly low and then it, it increases drastically if you have not buried them within 24 hours. Then it's just bang up to max 50 because it's no longer 25 on rest. It's 50 and it's 50 per member. So if a large family loses two of his granddads in one night and you don't have graves, they will all leave you because it will be up to over 100 unrest if they don't get graves it's insane but there you go so it's it's more important than ever to keep on top of any unrest especially combination unrest it's a lethal anyway right so now we're going into night number three so we have a lot of fireplaces now which is good and i'm going to add more graves better safe than sorry because we have so many old people in the tribe in comparison to kids. We have like twice as many old people. So we're going to start uh, within a year or so, we're going to start losing elders like flies. They're going to die off like flies, like four and six per night. So you need graves, a lot of graves. Okay, I'm just going to let them work in peace. So uh, I want to give them a big... Um, option to pray i'm going to make them a, a small men here and for that i will need a thousand raw stones i put a limit on a thousand let's lock down them bones because we don't want those to be out in the open that's for sure that's also a reason to for, for tribe to leave is that they are forced to eat hated food but hated food on rest only goes up to 25 and the most hated food is bone, that is Insta25 at least. Then you have um, roots, which is between 17 and 19. And then you have grains, which is roughly a little bit under, but it's still disliked and we don't want any of it. And they will um, increase the amount of unrest for hated food based on how many meals in a row they have to take it. So it can go up to 25 but it starts lower depending on how hated it is. This might change from when we are, from when I'm now making this um, tutorial and until the next, next patch comes out. This is the thing with whatever I make of tutorials and, and playthroughs, within one patch, a lot of what I say might be outdated. So you have to keep this in mind. You have to be a bit more aware that uh, things can change or not lock yourself into that everything I say cannot ever change because it likely will uh, you know per patch there will be more and more changes so just if you keep updated with the patch notes that I make and also the playthroughs you should also stay updated but it can actually change from one week to the next so um, one of the reasons why uh, it is possible to migrate with 400 plus population is that you're using the tribe policies correctly. So do not rely on that putting everything on default will solve everything. It will not. People will leave when you put everything and leave it on default without adjusting ever. And you also will have issues with completing tasks. And sometimes you also need um, the communal tasks to be so high that you can get, a, a, say you are lassoing in a fairly high amount of emergency materials for before the farming starts, because when the farming starts, the utter majority of your tribe will be on the farm. Even with 400 people, you will not have a lot of people doing communal tasks. So it's important that you have enough materials in camp before clearing, tilling and planting. So don't be afraid to use the policies. If you are a hardcore player and you know the mechanics, you also know how important it is to use the policies right. As a thumb rule, do not meddle too much with the work hours unless it's just for a few days and then you must place it 
below default afterwards because when it is on default you are affecting only those without any bad grades you are still affecting those with bad grades this is very important to remember default will affect people with bad grades one notch below will not affect the majority of your tribe if there is one person that is really bad grades like grade 3 of will reduction and grade 3 of fitness reduction you need to not lower the work hours anymore because you need at least six hours to get some work done in the tribe you can of course take a day or two putting work hours on zero if you've had a spur in income previously but i will not do that i will risk losing those with the utter bad grades however here's the thing you as a hardcore player and any player to be honest even those who enjoy beginners and feel that they are better served for beginners at the moment you can deny all migrants with bad grades what you cannot do is deny births with bad grades they will come no matter what you do but you have the option to reject all migrants with any bad grades and you need to do it if you want to survive a 400 population migration you have to deny bad grades just saying very important so there are many factors playing a part in succeeding in not losing everyone or half your tribe to be honest when you are migrating with such a big tribe the secret is no longer a secret use your policies right be picky with who you accept of migrants make sure that your work hours are never above default for any prolonged time and rarely on default have them much more one notch below all your people in the tribe without any of the bad grades in either will or fitness will have zero issues at any time even if you up the work hours for a few days in a crisis or if you see that you need more time to complete the farms and you don't have enough people up the work hours and then quickly when they are done when the farms are done get them down one notch below the default this is this is the secret and that basically means control your combination unrest, control your unrest at all. And keep in mind that will will cause them to leave as well, unless you have constantly changes in quality of comfort and housing. So when I then place down the uh, small men here, which I will do soon, then I will add another time limit for me to get even more housing of the good kind so that more people can rotate away any unrest into the uh, plus eight quality housing this is all there is to it it is no rocket science you just need to know how to work with the policies and this is something that i've seen a lot of people fail on and one thing that i never mess around with is rationing and another thing that you need to be super careful messing around with it's work hours. Those two, two things can create a lot of unrest. And then we have the symbiotic relationship with the communal task versus the group tasks. If you have it too high on communal tasks, you don't get any group tasks done. Or you can get to the situation where you are communal tasking your tribe to death. Or if you have it too much on group tasks, then no communal tasks are getting done. So if you wish to uh, rely on having a lot of of points a lot of people doing the group task you need to make sure that everything that needs to be kept up to date with regards to housing and quality um, housings especially and items that needs to be uh, produced like the bakery you know the 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 things that give food and give comfort you can put them in groups because then that counts as groups, doesn't it? It is no longer a communal task. So fireplaces are in groups, all bakings are in group, all the baskets are in group, all my storehouses will be in a group, and all housing should be in a group. At least one or two. Uh, are roughly 20 to 25 houses is what a maxed out builders group can take care of. And then you need another group. Or rely on tribe. But that also means if you are really busy, and have your policies on a lot for group tasks then these uh, community tasks 
communal tasks will suffer. So it is complete and utter symbiotic balance you need to find. And it is possible, if I can find it, all of you who are listening here and watching this video can find it. If you are a, a beginner, you can also watch this. I'm not asking you to know everything I know. Of course, of course not. You, you just started or you enjoy it, whatever, whatever reason you have. If you can manage to stay alive in hardcore, even with just 100 people in migration, you can transfer that to a huge beginner stripe up to 500 and not lose a single member just use the policies right find the balance listen to your people that's basically it and of course don't forget your graves 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 yeah even beginners even beginners will have issues if you forget the graves I know beginners are supposed to be a, a sandbox when you are not hammered by the restrictions that normal or that expert and especially hardcore have. You will still have people being really upset if you don't bury their loved ones. So don't skimp on the graves ever, never, never. Always get down graves. You can let your people sleep for, for half a year by the fireplace in, in beginners. They don't care, but they will protest heavily if you don't have graves on them. So that is kind of the alpha and the omega to start. Get down graves, get down fireplaces. We do not want people to sleep in the open after day four. That is a recipe for disaster. So chalk down fireplaces and only use the bigger ones. Get sticks, get raw stones. Super important. Because you should already have enough food to sustain your tribe for between five and at least seven days. So then you can go down on the people who are uh, gathering food and let them focus on building instead. And that is what you should do. So if you have low food when you need to migrate, uh, of course you're migrating because you have low food, otherwise why would you? You need to do scavenge runs before you settle in a new locality. So you need to go to a place, any place really, doesn't matter, and just uh, harvest everything. You basically uh, turn your tribe into a swarm of locusts. You are ravaging the locality and when you have enough food for many days, then you go and be semi sedentary again up to perhaps five years if you're lucky with a good seed because you need to rely so much more on wild produce than you normally would for instance in beginners because beginners gives a ton more food from cultivated food so um hardcore has roughly 0 0.3 to 0 0.35 yield per cell per farm while beginners has up to a full unit per cell per farm which is uh an increase of yeah 60 75 percent roughly pending temperature of course and where you are in europe the higher north you are the less yield you have and the further south you are the more yield you have i mean in spain you can easily have 0 0.4 yield in in for instance wheat um if you are playing even hardcore so think about that just if you want it really easy even if it's hardcore and if you start ice age find a green green belt down in the south i mean spain barely had 200 years of of ice age if any you know so they will be really well developed have a, a ton more food than any more northern areas will have so just find a green belt if you want to try try yourself out 10 kbc and and then play from there on hardcore and you will have a much easier time if you want it really hardcore and a pain in the you know where go to norway or start in doggerland that's 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 my recommendation <laughs> if you want to stress sweat and cry you go to the most northern part in norway you can or you go to doggerland there you go <laughs> that's <laughs> But yeah, scavenge runs are important because you need to spend the time, the first weeks or two even, with building and gathering materials where you are. So put down your food gatherers low and let them eat what you brought with you. Except of course the seeds you need to, to plant your farms if you are so lucky that you've managed to survive with foreign people into the Neolithic timeline, which is not a guarantee under any circumstance. Right. What else? There is there is a, a few do's and don'ts, um, and now also in the beta version, when we can make 900 cell farms, you will need more people to complete them. Obviously, uh, the limit is still 64, and you can actually make half the map 
can be used for farms only because they're huge, aren't they? They're huge. You take the entire uh, peninsula we have here with farms only. But you know what? If to, in order to make 64 farms, you need over 900 people. And that's not going to work. So I don't think anyone is ever going to reach that limit until we come to the future, of course, where we will have increased limits and we can make, uh, we can have a lot bigger tribes. And basically, this is where the word cities come from in the, the, the game name Ancient Cities. Because for now, we are just building, building villages, aren't we? Big villages, and that's it. We have camps and villages but it will come in the future we we will see it right so uh, getting all the locked storages sorted is important yeah some of them are actually being planted um, we did not manage any of the uh, wheat but we have enough grains to survive that as well be it with um, planting next year as well let's just see if they can manage to survive that long but you know we will uh, continue to gather a uh, wild crop anyway to su sustain the the seed need so uh, i'm not too worried about that the problem for me is always to get enough of the peas, the pulses because they tend to take a few years before they start coming or they don't come at all depending where you are so yeah so not all places have all the crops and this is why you can use raiding and trading as well if you are struggling with food if you want to be sedentary you have to raid and trade as well otherwise you will not make it but in principle with the amount of food that we have now in hardcore very reduced you're not likely going to succeed very long term sedentary uh, with 400 plus population in hardcore it's um i'm going to keep trying to push these limits to see if i can do it but there's absolutely no guarantee and the likelihood of you making it is rather slim but if you are extremely good at what you're doing and you have a really good seed and you have good trading partners and plenty tribes that you can steal food and other things you need from, you could actually make it at least for a while. So don't lose heart. Everything is possible in this game because you can push limits, which is why I love it so much as well. Yeah, the, the pushing limits is uh, part of what I see as really fun. So that's really nice. Right, so uh, as we can see, the majority of people still have uh, yellow faces because we only have one good quality, but they are going down in the total unrest anyway. They can tolerate more uh, nights sleeping by the fireplace because we are getting up houses more and more and more and more people are rotating sleeping in the houses uh, instead of just sleeping by the fireplaces. But nobody is sleeping in the open. That is the most important part absolutely crucial so let's get down we are not going to build a gazillion flax farms there's no point we don't have any uh wild uh, wildlife almost said we don't have any livestock and uh, we seem to be doing okay on fiber for now we're not going to stay long enough to feel the real uh, pain in the you know where when logistics is messing up your count when you need to redo groups and adjust groups because they have to go so far to get the same resources you need or the increased resources you will need for sure as your tribe is getting more and more objects and more and more housing so everything counts so it is a plus that you're not uh, uh, fully sedentary, you're only semi-sedentary, because when logistics is becoming a pain in the you-know-where, then you just up the, the camp and, and move to a new one. Yeah. So that is a semi-sedentary uh, hardcore uh, tribe. And, and this is fully doable, absolutely doable, up to the limit of population, which is 512. But you're not likely going to reach it. Beginners can reach up to 500, maybe 510, 11 even. But um, a hardcore will never reach it because the the birth rates are already at 400 or 380 actually, going quite a bit down so that you shan't have too many people. It shall be harder to get more people via births, but you still have the option to get up your population rate via migrants. So you can do that as well. Uh, we are going to lose quite a few of the elders. We have still 
twice as many elders as we have kids so we will easily go down to 400 and maybe dip below before it slowly goes back up and then we can rely on migrants if we're getting any to to get a bit higher amounts so um, it will be a bit yo-yoing with the the population size but um, one thing to know for sure if people are dying from starvation it is not going to be only one it's going to be at least 30 percent of your tribe so if you see a player has 400 people and suddenly he goes down with 10 you know it's old people who has died but if you see he's going down with 50 you know he's had a famine or people have left on on moss the thing with people leaving that it is proper curse is that it is also affecting the immediate family and the family of the family extended family so if you lose one person if that person has a lot of relatives a lot of siblings then the siblings can leave and the siblings uh, mates can leave and the siblings children can live and the uncles and the aunts in the end you can lose 80 percent of your tribe you can lose almost your entire tribe if one person leaves no kidding and in hardcore they will leave four times faster than they ever would in beginners ever so balancing unrest is so important i can't emphasize it enough right so i'm kind of trying to not have too high population so I don't mind the the dip because there, there will be a dip no matter what I do and the increase will be slow but I'm, I'm going to accept the migrants I do get and see how that goes but it will stay between 400 and 420 for a long time I think unless I get a lot of migrants so yeah so some of the uh, the farmers have actually managed to do quite a bit of work on the uh, the farms. Those who need um, tilling, planting, and and uh, yeah, harvesting, they're almost said tilling last are those who are, are more likely to get more done. But uh, yeah, you see some of them have need to give up. This one is being tilled. Good. Yeah, I think we got a lot done though, even though we started fairly late getting up the farms. But on slow, you have a lot more time. Like on fast, you have three days. On normal, you have six days. And on slow, you have nine days. But then again, you also feed your people six times per month rather than four times per month on expert and only two times on, no, on speed, I mean, and only two times on fast. So normal speed is uh, four, four meals per month and slow is uh, six and fast is two. Yeah, so there. So I need to get up these reed huts. We need more and more reed huts as people's patience and will uh, makes them more and more likely to leave. See everyone who has unhappy faces. Yeah, they need to get better housing because that is what they lack. So it is only a certain amount of time they will accept sleeping by the fireplace before unrest comes to to letting will decide if they're going to stay or leave. So the more houses you can get up in shortest amount of time, the better off you will be, of course. And again, you will see that I have two types of grayed out houses in the build. I can only say that one is the usual one and the other one I cannot talk about. I wish I could, but I cannot. It's because this uh, this tribe is my testing tribe and I've used it for testing the latest patches. I have one uh, 400 tribe in beginners I've used for testing and one 400 tribe I've used for testing in, in hardcore because you need to test several difficulties and not only one. So the, 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 um, the beginner and the hardcore, if you divide them by two, you get the expert. <laughs> roughly, roughly. Or you can just do the expert and then divide it by, by two for hardcore and multiply it by two for beginners with regards to amount of food and stuff. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, look at that. A lot of these farms will actually be done in time. That is well done, but I also think it is because I placed maximum priority on each farm and maximum um, farmers in each group. So that is the only reason we've managed to be so quick about it. Right, uh, let me see. 
more and more getting up. And the whole another thing which is important to to keep a, a track on is that they have enough liked food available, because that will remove some of the or they will appease some of the unrest. So if you allow them to have uh, richly with the fatty, sugary food that they like, such as meats, fish, and of course milk and uh, bread, and also honey and berries, they they will have um, I like the food um, pluses. They need to to be kept happy, basically. On more than one front so we need to avoid too much uh, disliked food is that a yeah I built over a, a mud a mud pile so that had to go let's put it somewhere else so I have a, a group for threshers as well because they will do all the threshing to make sure that it actually gets done before the next planting season um, depending on the amount of threshers you have, you can have maximum 32. Uh, but if you calculate a bit, you can get it to be a nice trickle throughout the entire year so that you are reaching zero around the time uh, planting starts again or clearing first. And that means that you will also have a seeds. Uh, of course, you save those that you need for planting, of course, but then you will have any overflow of those it can go directly into baking. So you will have a nice trickle of bread throughout the entire year. And remember that the decay on the uh, wheat sheaves and the decay on the grains are together. So even though you thresh a fairly decayed uh, wheat sheave, it will still give you a fairly decayed um, wheat grain. But if you then make it into flour and bake it, then that decay resets. Yeah. So just keep that in mind. It's a bit important to to keep in mind when you are trying to survive with 400 people in in hardcore. So uh, I think I think if um, if I'm going to push, which I probably am, knowing me, I will probably push like hell. Uh, I'm going to have a very big majority of wheat <clears throat> of wheat farms. I can only have as many wheat farms as I have groups to do the threshing. Because if the, the threshers cannot keep up with the amount of wheat sheaves we get in, then it's going to be a waste because the wheat crop only lasts roughly one year before they are decayed away. So there needs to be a balance there as well. Everything is finding the right balance. I will do more of these peltats. Anything helps? Anything better than fireplace? So also remember to uh, adjust your intake of all resources. We're not too worried about wasting. What I'm worried about is having too little. Because when all the farms are being worked on, uh, most people will not have the opportunity to do any communal tasks. So we need materials to make sure that the groups that have responsibility for the high comfort stuff, housing, fireplaces, baskets needed to make sure that your seats are safe um, are having the materials they need to do any repairs during farming because they will also have high priority the thing is with the groups doing the repairs they won't spend weeks on weeks on it they won't spend many days they will do it perhaps over one or two days while the farming will be continuously for nine days so yeah trying to find the balance so you have a, a nice repair going all the time so you need to make sure you have enough materials uh, for for these um, semi uh, sedentary uh, tribes I don't um, care too much about limits on food because I only have the straggler group and lower priority groups doing any food um, so far uh, we are okay but we are going to have to perhaps within one year increase the fishermen with a full group and also the hunters with two full groups we need to make sure that they have liked food all the time and the wild produce will not be high no matter what we do so I will do the solo task group for nuts perhaps the last year we're here before we move on and that's basically it but I am pleased to see that the uh, rose hip uh, population almost said 
the density and the prevalence of rose hips is still going well after the, the tweaks that the devs did to the mushrooms and the rose hips. You see it very well on the rose hips for sure because you can have really nice clusters now in hardcore as well as beginners as, and especially in, in parts of Spain and England that so rarely had any big clusters at all no matter uh, where you try to land your butt. Was always a lack of of rose hips, but that is now sorted. So rose hip used to be a staple along with nuts, and then for over a year it was not. Something happened to the temperature, and then um, uh, the devs fixed it again. So now we are back to having both the hazelnuts and the rose hips as um, staples, which is good. Right. So I've started building the. Uh, small men here and I placed two of those wooden posts because uh, I do have enough Mesolithic influence to keep it forever I think I don't think I will ever lose the Mesolithic influence I think unless I overload with Neolithic then they will take over no matter what I do but you only need one person you only need one percent of Mesolithic influence to actually keep the wooden posts so that is good and we are going to take this opportunity to add more farms because now it is the um, beets who are going to be harvested first. So I'm going to, to add more farms to basically all groups because they will have time for it. Just get them maxed out. There's quite a few trees now that we need to get rid of. So yeah, it's going to be a bit work. But uh, as long as we can still get enough from wild from of what we lack to feed people there shouldn't be an issue so i estimate uh, another year or so fine with food here and then it will start to go down and down in the wild produce and we should of course move before we are completely out do a scavenge run and then settle down again for another perhaps three to five years it really depends on on the seed of the locality nothing is for certain and nothing is ever the same. There's always some difference from one place to the other. So each uh, type of food has its own seed. So then you can uh, imagine all the combination it's, it, it's possible to have, which is basically so much I can't even calculate it. I'm not even going to try calculating it, it's too much. Okay, let's get him maxed. Yeah, good. So then we should have only the last farm left, which should be wheat, if I'm not remembering wrong. Let's get maxed out. So basically now with these here, we are uh, taking each and every person in the tribe for farming. So that's why it's uber important to have plenty resources in before clearing, tilling and planting starts. You know, cause, cause clearing, tilling and planting easily takes nine days. Yeah, when you have several farms per, per group, but the, the harvest will always be done within a day or two. So it's not for harvest that you need to, to get all materials in. It is for the clearing, the tilling and the planting. Yeah. We can do one of each of those. We don't need that much wheat. We need to make sure that we can um, thresh whatever we get before a new planting season starts or at least before a new um, oops, harvest season starts. We need to get rid of that skeleton. Okay, I think, yeah. So this should be what we need of of farms for now to, to do a 50-50 plus minus a little bit here and a little bit there to keep up with the feeding of the tribe but it won't be many years before it's too little okay so just one left to do So 
So it's also important to remember that you need to make sure that if you're filling up your overflow baskets, you need to have extra uh, more extra space to make sure that when one needs repair, there is space in the other one to take whatever is being carried out from the basket that needs repairs. So keep that in mind. And also one other important part is that even if our, our 900 cell farm only takes between 20 and 30 ish cells, uh, seeds or so to be planted depending on your your tool if you have a tool that is uh, you will need to remember that if you have 56 people but only 30 seeds then 56 people will not do work only 30 people will do the work and when you're down to 10 seeds then only 10 people will do the work because they cannot go plant when they don't have a seed so always have a bit extra seeds to make sure that all 56 uh, members of the farming group is being utilized. Otherwise, you could run out of time because you cannot go far down on the members or the, the, the farmers on the farms before you run out of time because it is 900 cells you need to do. Yeah. So uh, placing down a storehouse for some of the farm yield and also I think for the meat and the nuts, I'll see uh, how much gets in because uh, um, raw produce always decay faster than any of the others. But uh, uh, the, the food is being consumed so fast of the very popular food that uh, there is no need for dryers and you don't need to worry about losing any skills in, in food processing because of all the threshing that is being done because that also gives uh, food processing skills. Um, right, so this one is yeah so i'm doing extra baskets as well and i'm not doing uh, a ton of pits first of all because it's only one service point and when you have a 400 tribe you need to have so many pits to cover to make sure that everyone gets to to eat when they should at meal time uh, that it can create queues and people are then starting to skip so if you're going to use the pits, use them for low income produce such as, um, what's it called? I forgot the name. Mushrooms, oh my word. Mushrooms, roots, use them for the produce uh, like um, flax for your animals, for the feeders for your animals. And the odd, the odd one uh, for any kind of food, but you also need then to have, if it's a high volume um, income food, you need to have several three point uh, access as well, meaning either storehouses or baskets. And as long as the tribe is so huge, uh, there will be little waste because most of the food will be eaten within a few days. And ergo, it should not need to be stored or processed further. Yeah, does that make sense to you as well? Good. I'm assuming I'm assuming yes so yeah so that's that's how I do it basically this is how I make sure that I lose no people and then basically it's all about keeping um, up the speed in getting comfort getting better housing at the same time as you are feeding your tribe and doing the farms so all this has to be controlled at the same time you can't do one thing at a time everything must be done at the same time so if you try to to imitate me almost said if you try to use some of the 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 tips and hints that i use to achieve success with moving uh, big tribes migrating then you should be okay in any any timeline and any difficulty for sure Oh boy, I ran out of graves. So now I just hope that nobody dies. Otherwise, I'm F you, you know what? I'm F you. <laughs> yep, just let them build. This is one of the reasons why people lose uh, the majority of their tribe. Forgetting to put up bloody graves. It's because I babble too much. Let's get these placed down so they're not floating everywhere in the camp. They should be close to where the threshers are. Yeah. Good, good. I should also find time to make more housing. Could do a few more, I think. Okay, so we have four four reed huts that is being um, divided. People are rotating, which is good. 
storehouse is almost done. You guys can make more of these. Ta da! See, I can leave uh, a few of these ones in. No, that's too short. Need more space to leave them for tribe responsibility. Oops. I didn't want it there. I wanted one notch back. So delete that one. They need to have space to actually move as well. There you go. Yep. Look, there is one that is really pissed off because uh, his relative does not have a grave. But I have roughly 24 hours before it goes really bad. So just need my people to be efficient. And now we have um, harvested the beets. So it's time to lock down everything. Uh, those can be eaten up. Those can be eaten up as well because we haven't uh, harvested our wheat yet. Yeah, remembering to lock down your seeds is really important. How are we doing here? Oh, thank goodness we are getting them. Yeah, thank goodness my people are efficient. <laughs> Otherwise I would be, you know what I would be. <laughs> right. So I don't want any more to die now. Stop dying. Let's do some uh, baskets for the flower and also a uh, log store as well. It's always a good idea to have the, the timber close to the uh, uh, bakery, to all the ovens. Right. How are we doing with housing? Yeah, coming along. Okay, we have several graves now. So we had two that was not buried, but we got up uh, enough graves in time. Thank goodness. Otherwise, people would have started leaving, at least the relatives, and then there would be the domino effect of a family leaving and the extended family, etc., etc. Let's have a few of these strategically placed around we don't want to lose any of the straw because we do need it for the uh, building and the repairs the the usage we are doing now the, the the way we are using up the reeds and all the resources is not something we should do if we're playing a uh, long term we need to do better if we're doing long term but since we just want to stay for semi semi sedentary like three to five years max then uh, I'm not too worried. So I just harvest wildly. And we don't have roundhouses either yet anyway, so we must have reed huts until we get roundhouses. And that is going to take some time because we lack quite a bit of uh, Neolithic influence. So basically we must uh, rely on the reed to get quality housing. Okay, so that one is for nuts, cause uh, nut season, hazelnut season is coming up, starting in October. Yeah. Let's uh, make a group for them. Don't need too many, cause it's roughly two. Yeah, I think it's two per storehouse that you can place of people. Yeah. Ta -da. They are of course also going to make more storehouses for other produce as well. I'm going to make for red meat I think and also for the beets and peas. Yeah, I think so. We've had so many of the elder people dying now that we needed extra graves and they died so many that Suddenly I had eight and then suddenly I had zero left. So eight people in a few days died. Ridiculous amount. But you know, when you are 400, it is not that high amount. It's just getting used to that. You eight to 10 are going in one night, you know? So yeah, so this is where we are going on a dip because so many of the other population is, is dying from old age. Yeah, it's quite normal. So now we have five reed houses they can rotate on. Really good, really, really good. 
So the, the first season of Produce, it was surprisingly high. I did not expect my farmers to finish this quickly, but they actually did finish quickly. So I'm quite satisfied with that. We managed to get uh, up farms and have the majority of them planted. So this is, uh, this is good, really good. Now we need to get down food in these. Even though I'm going to make a storehouse for red meat, I still would like more uh, three service point storages for them. Because that is probably the most liked food along with fish, raw, uh, fish and, and meat, definitely. And of course, the other high calorie or sugary and uh, fatty foods. Another one died from a long life, yeah, not surprised. I'm so terrified of running out of graves now. I'm going to add even more, even though we have a quite a few available. Better safe than sorry. But there are quite a few births as well, so the population is not dipping that low. So that's good. Yes, I do want to keep it between 400 and 420 ish. I think that is something um, which uh, I can keep balanced. I'm probably going to try to push it to 500 as well if I can. But it's really difficult unless you are pounded by migrants, which we are not at all. Could they reload a save to to try to get more migrants, but it's a bit cheaty, a little bit cheaty. But I might do it anyway. I might. Let's get these baskets designated. Right, do we have everything under control? More or less. Okay, so those who are empty now, that has been eaten up, can be locked for the next harvest of these. And um, what does it once need to be? Oh, look, the men here is done. Excellent. That means that now the tribe can have even higher uh, appeasement from praying which allows us to torture them even more before they are leaving on hardcore who would have thought we can also probably now start to delete a few of these uh, fireplaces using less logs less work power work force to get logs let me see look at all these people we have yeah yeah, well, it's not. We still have a lot of old people. Man, we need more births. But at least the kids are catching up. Ish. Ish. Right. You guys can probably do a few more of the ovens. More bread for the people. Feed your people. Okay, so we only have enough for two ovens at the moment. I, I just, I, I like to have all the materials in camp before I build everything. So that means things get done one by one and I don't mind that at all at all so you guys are going to have some lovely lovely beets we need to turn down the priority so they don't go there first they need to go there last because these are uh, overflow for consumption and not for saving for seeding no planting let me see 
you guys can now start doing other things. You can start getting in more loved wild produce. Yes, go for it. Go be efficient. So we now have two fishermen groups and I also added another hunter group here to get more food. Looking okay, everything under control for now. Could quickly go really titty up. Okay, still over half the tribe is sleeping by the fireplace. I'm not sure I'm going to build more pelt huts at all. They are so disliked anyway, but it's better than fireplace or sleeping in the open, definitely. So. Need to keep an eye on the food here. Yeah, we should be all right, even though the blue apple is showing. The tribe has already gobbled up the majority of the beets we harvested. For being a, a medium calorie rich food, the, the tribe sure loves beets. A bit more than I anticipated, to be honest. But I remember in the beginning, um, when people did not have food preferences and they didn't get unrest from eating disliked food or lesser food, lesser calorie foods, um, they went for the cultivated foods immediately. It's like, yeah, I think it's a good thing that the devs removed the high love for um, raw cultivated produce. Otherwise they would be swarming around the beets more than they are now. I mean, they are already swarming a lot, aren't they? They always seem to love the beets so much. Right, so let's see if we can keep a good eye on everything. So you see the uh, unhappy faces are going down in amounts, which means that we now, yeah, we have seven of the reed huts. So even though over half the tribe is still sleeping by the fireplace, they are rotating well enough to remove a lot of the angry faces. So this means we, we actually can torture the tribe more, which is never a bad thing. I would like to chalk up the work hours every uh, clearing, planting and tilling season and add another two farms to each group. See how that goes. Well, we have to keep uh, trying things to figure out how things go, right? I personally would never stop doing that. It, it's part of what I really enjoy doing. Okay, let's get two more of those. Go be efficient. Good little bogs. Should call one of my leaders seven of nine. My favorite bog. There you go. And the tribe can do a few of these as well. Go, go, go. There is time for it. Yeah. Okie dokie. So what is lacking to be harvested? Is it the... Uh, no, the the the, uh, the wheat is being done at the moment. It's being done now. So, yeah. Let's just see if we can keep, a, keep good control over what is going on. So I'm really happy that uh, we managed to get the housing rotated so that only a part of the tribe has our... Uh, angry faces we don't want any angry faces you know but uh, how you guys do you can go down to 50 now because we do not need to build more bakeries no more ovens i don't think there are any pine nuts here at all even though we are fairly low in the alps we could be lucky and get a few, you know, we could, because the, the uh, pines that uh, belongs to the Mediterranean, Mediterranean area, or is it Caribbean? Oh my goodness, it's the Mediterranean area. 
um, they can they can spread a bit based on the temperature. So you can have them a bit up in in France as well, and a bit uh, and a bit west as well in in Spain. So you probably realise that some parts of the the uh, the belt that I showed initially, I don't remember when I did it, where the the prevalence of pine cones, pine trees would be, has spread a little bit because of the temperature. So it's all temperature based. Yeah, so sometimes you get it and, and sometimes you don't. At least the, the more further away areas from the Mediterranean. Okay, you as well. Let's see. Um, I, I need one more as well. And of course, baskets. I'm going to have four storehouses. Um, I'm building like we're going to stay for another few years, but I'm not sure we can. We will just have to wait and see. We just get uh, up some storage because we're getting more cultivated foods, which means there are more to choose between because we're also harvesting from the wild quite a lot with basically no limits. So we could do with some storages, but I'm not going to do um, one service point storages because we are way too many for that. I think we just need to keep it to the threes and the odd pit here and there. Also, the pits now cost fine sticks to be built, and I don't like that at all. So, yeah. So I'm choosing to not use them too much on the big tribes. I think that's a, that's a good strategy, to be honest, as long as they are only uh, allowing one person to help themselves at the same time. Could It could mean both cues... Uh, but more likely to mean that people are skipping meals and going directly to work or directly to, to, to bed. Oh, migrants, finally. We haven't had any for like donkey's years. So, yeah, and uh, it has animals as well, livestock. So back a bit to what we were talking about. People can wake up angry in the morning because they're hungry. And uh, uh, the ones who are handling this the worst is absolutely the kids they can't afford to skip any meal so we must make sure we have enough service points for everyone oh we also with these migrants got a cow meaning this year she will be mature meaning she will start to give milk look at her running to camp so the the livestock will always now go to camp they will not stand around for years by the edge i remember before that was sorted it was so annoying that the herders went into the edges of the maps to to milk the animals standing there so yeah i don't have to worry about that anymore don't mind that at all right so we have got our first animal, finally. Uh, but you know, we're only 4.5 K BC, 4.5 K, yeah, sure. 4,500 BC, so I shouldn't complain too much. This is pretty much how it should be. Uh, blue face on happiness, I'm happy with that. No pun intended. Okay, so the last oven is being built as well, good. Look at all the uh, the uh, straw that the tr threshing is giving now, the wheat uh, sheaves. But we do need it, make no mistake. If you're going to have 100, 150 livestock and tons of houses, majority of them actually using straw as building material and or repair material, you will need a lot of straw. So yeah, don't mind that at all. The good thing about straw is it can basically be produced on demand when you have um, farms with, with wheat. So I'm quite happy about that. It was a, that was a really, really good change, really needed, to be honest. A lot of people were struggling a lot with balancing the livestock, the repairing the building of housing and straw. And it, it doesn't help that you know, after 10, 20 years in the same locality when you are sedentary Neolithic, you need to use so much more workforce after 20 years to get the same amount of straw. 
that it's becoming a little bit ridiculous. So hopefully that will um, take away some of the logistic issues that we do have after many years in the same locality. I'm not sure how many of you guys are actually staying same locality for decades. I know I like to do it. Um, I like to never migrate, to be honest. But sometimes I have to. Especially if uh, some of the resources uh, go out and the ones that can go out uh, quickly is the fine raw stones. If you harvest like a schmuck and uh, produce a lot more access than you need, then you could go out after a few decades. Then you only have a small trickle coming in every year and it's probably not enough to keep up all the the axes you have so let's let's make a, a space for this cow to eat i'm going to create both a hay feeder and an area where she can just feed as she see she sees fit from um, open storage with straw she won't be starving let's just say that and i don't need to feed her any other produce she can just have the straw because we have so much of it so that's good that's a good change yeah, let's go. get these baskets done. I think we have enough baskets now. Uh, we still have some of the produce in the open, meaning there will be no queue at all. But uh, when it is high volume, you need to be careful so you don't lose so much to decay. So it can't be huge amounts. You know, it can't be thousands upon thousands because that is going to get wasted. But we're now going into winter and spring, so we need to make sure we have enough food for everyone. Also loved food, so I keep on fishing and I keep on hunting. How are we doing with graves? We should be alright for a while longer. I can't keep forgetting to add graves. I, I need to remember that in a population of 400 plus, you, you will lose up to 10 every 2-3 days on average. No, not on average, that's not correct. You will lose, you can lose up to 10, like where you lost 8 in 2 nights which really got me by surprise. But it's normal, normally a trickle of between two to f maybe four, perhaps. But then again, you also have a nice trickle of births all the time. So, yeah, so we need to, to get the births, births and the uh, elder population more aligned with each other. Because at the moment, we have so much more elder people than we have, than we have uh, child, child births. So need to get that sorted there's not so much we can do about it we just have to take the births that we get and uh, as it is now we will always have a lot more elder people than we have babies being born so yeah that's just the way it is yeah let's see you guys can make the last one you can put it in the middle here I think that one is going to be or whatever we lack yeah that will be the last storehouse I'm building shouldn't have to need more than four the rest will be eaten up fairly quickly right it is just basically now to get up more housing as you go along and keep an eye on how people feel avoid as many angry faces as you can so we now have enough graves uh, yeah not hysterically added more at all um, then we have our proper men here so the the praying is higher and quicker because we added wooden posts and we're getting more and more uh, reed houses, which means that more and more people are rotating away their unrest. So this is good. So you can see that there's not a lot of angry faces at all, but it, it is very up and down. It will, you know, uh, float a bit up and a bit down. It comes and goes. And then they have something good they do, like they pray or they sleep in a reed house and then it will calm down again. As you can see, those who mainly have a happy face are those 40 plus percent that still needs to sleep out by the fireplace. But if they get a storehouse, on oh, the storehouse, if they get a reed house one or two nights, they are actually losing the angry face again. 
So it is fully possible to have a huge tribe in hardcore without having um, proper housing for everyone as long as they are rotating. And they do, they, they normally do. But of course, ideally, you should have housing for everyone. Um, not everyone will be happy with, with sleeping four or five nights in a row in peltots. So this is also why I tend to remove some of the peltots and replace them with better quality. But you don't need to remove everything. You can easily have a nice mix of types of housing because the rotation is going to be good no matter. Right, so this means that I have uh, too few uh, beets for 56 on each farm or in each group to be active. But it's not a matter of much. We have uh, 112 beet farmers active at the moment and there is uh, too little seeds for everyone. But that doesn't mean that the, the beet farms won't get done because beet farms always get done. They have so much time to do it. I'm not worried at all. So having uh, quite a bit of extra seeds could help you with this this report to get rid of it. So it's not that the, you don't have enough seed for all farms, you don't have enough seed for all farmers. That's the difference. Right. So we are on top of what we need to be on top in top on top of. Um yeah, it's too early for the peas yet, but the peas, peas have tons of seeds, so they will not have the lack of seed reports because all 56 times two farmers, 112, that is 112, right? <laughs> all those farmers will have plenty of seeds to choose between, choose from, so that is not an issue. See, there you go. All active. Good. Wheat farms are of course done. They're going into their last week now. So if there are a few cells that has not been done yet, they can still be done. And we have two seeds left. Yay. Whoop de doo. Two farmers can seed now, whatever is lacking. It won't be much. So that is the last of the peas, I think. And uh, we see, you see, we don't have 50 plus seeds. We only have a bit below. So that means that not all farmers get a seed. But it doesn't mean that it won't be done. It will be done in good time. You have, you have another two, three weeks on the peas. So I'm ain't, I ain't worried. Right. So you can see, you can see, it is fully possible. To keep a 400 plus tribe alive if you are semi sedentary. I have not tested yet on long term sedentary. I might make it and I might not. Um, if I do make it, I, I think I will just let you guys know how I did by making a, a tutorial, or not a tutorial, but a playthrough. Um, I think that would be um, cool if I could actually manage that. But we shall see how it goes. There are zero guarantees, especially with all the food reduced. So the, the only thing that has not been drastically reduced is um, the hazelnuts, but the cultivated food have been reduced with at least, um, it used to be 0 04, it's now 0 03, 0 35. So it's almost a full unit uh, reduction on average. But of course, the further south you are, the more you will get. And the further north you are, the less you will get. That's just how it is. It makes sense. North, northern areas have, have less growth and that's just how it is. Right, so all the farms are done and dusted. And this means we can manage another winter here. I have increased uh, my fishing groups to two and my hunter groups to three. So uh, now we'll see if we can manage um, another year or so but now we have played for two years so i am going to just go over some of the points that are really important to remember when you are migrating a hardcore tribe with a high population 
So step number one is the preparation. You need to prepare properly. Do not settle in a place with too little food. You need between five to seven days of food so that you can use all your people to build and prepare for farms and prepare for the planting and, and, and yeah, tilling and planting harvesting season. It has to be done the first year. You cannot wait an entire year. That's not going to work. So what you need to do is you start another place, add one farm of each, make sure you save those seeds from each type of farm and then bring it with you. And here's another tip. Make sure you have a lot more loved food than you have any of the crop types. Otherwise, tribe will eat up your crops before you manage to get any locked storages for them. This is ultra important. Then you need to make sure that you don't have more than um, four days. You don't have less than four days before people are dying from old age. If they have four days and lower, you need to wait till they are done. You could be really unlucky and have it in such a balance that there is always a few dying every night. And if that's the case, you just have to risk. But you could check their family. The smaller family they have, the less chance it is for people leaving and smaller amounts of people will be leaving. Step three, do not travel on daylight, daylight only travel at night because when you travel at night the tribe will sleep without getting lack of housing unrest you will land with zero unrest so also number four make sure they don't have work hour unrest overtime unrest so place down the work hours so that all unrest disappears from work hours because those will not be reset when you migrate, they will remain and continue growing when you land. And then it is basically just to travel far at night so people sleep, but travel short. The, the moment um, sun is up and people are moving, the tribe is moving again on the map. Yeah, look at all the, the people that have that have died, all the old people. Damn so many and then when you land first first rule place down enough uh, graves i would not place down less than 12 if you have a 400 plus tribe no less than 12 and then immediately create a fireplace group with 14 people in it just chuck it up with max priority and place down one fireplace per 10 people so roughly 40 and then place down like between 6 to maybe 12 peltas or smaller amounts if you have plenty straw with you uh, set your house builder group immediately to build three four six houses in one go just get it done and also make sure that you have high priority and maxed out this the stick group and also highest priority maxed out population work spots in the raw stone group and place the work age on max and place your work hours again to max that you're allowed and place um, the communal task one or two notches below default to make sure that groups are prioritized because there should then be enough people to do the few communal tasks there will be there won't be many because most of the things you are building should be in a builders group yeah and just uh, get down offerings as well you can place them wherever you like to i like to place them as ornamentive on the graves but you can place them wherever you see fit there's no hardcore rule about this just place them where you need because people will seek and find them no matter and then you need to immediately also start your farms because ideally you need to wait in the previous area until you have threshed all your wheat and your flax and that will not be done until max of few weeks before winter starts and when winter starts we all know that clearing and tilling will in also start more or less immediately at the same time so you don't have a lot of time to fiddle about you need to be precise in what you're doing and get it done and don't fiddle with 40 cell farms max out your farms immediately chalk up 
the priority on the farms, the priority in the groups and max out the work spots in the farmer group and create at least one of each. You can get away with one of each if you are really stressed, but you cannot get away with one of each the following years. You need to incrementally increase the farms, one farm extra or two if you manage per year. And that's it. And then keep an eye on the work policies. You need to make sure that you're not overtaxing your people. Keep any combination on rest under control via keeping your work hours low, below default. Yeah, only in short, short amount of time should you re increase it. And, and I think that's basically it. And another small detail as well could be, become a real problem if you don't have enough of the wooden spears. Make sure you have more wooden spears than you have people to make sure that you allow decay to still not catch up and have too little wooden spears. That is basically it. Uh, also remember to use uh, auto saves on, for instance, five or 15 minutes. Allow yourself to make mistakes, then go back, rectify it and learn from it. Trust me, this is something I do all the time when I try out new things because you don't want to lose your entire tribe on a mistake that you did. You want to go back, rectify the error and then succeed and then continue building your tribe. Anyone claiming that they have succeeded in everything they do on the first try, they are not being truthful. So keep the save games and uh, don't be afraid to reload your game if you're making a mistake and want to do it differently to see how that works out for you and your tribe. This is trial and error. There is no uh, one way to play it. Play it the way you succeed. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Thank you so much everyone for watching. I shall of course be making more videos. Um, sometimes it takes a while between the videos because there's so much testing to do and I can't go to beta and start doing any playthroughs when I don't have any more uh, new things to give you. I will only do playthroughs when I have new things to teach you or to show you. So yeah, it won't be long though because I have several lined up that I have already been making or making as we speak and um, because I have several balls in the air. Is that how they say it? Like, can you say it like that? I don't know. It could sound a bit dirty, but who knows? Anyway, that's it for me for this time. Thank you so much, everyone. And until we meet again, new videos, have fun and take care. Go, go.